So I think it makes sense to leave the manage page as kind of the page that's going to display the existing messages. And we'll have a new page to actually create a new message. So we might say here, list of all current messages. And we will do this, but we have to create a message first, and then we can actually uh, list them here. So why don't, let's create a new file. And this one will be called edit. And in this file, I want to make a new page, and this is going to be a form that we submit that creates a new message. So if we want to make a new page, well, let's copy in, well, the same basic stuff from this uh, manage page. Of course, we need that. We're going to need config. We're going to need to set the context and this stuff again. So we put that in here. This is one's going to be called edit though. And we're going to say uh, edit. Because I guess here we can edit or create a message on this page. Cool. Okay, cool. So we are going to start displaying our basic page. Um, oh, and let's just put in, I guess, we're always going to need this. We're always going to need to output the header and the footer. But in between there, now I want to output a form. And the way you usually do it is actually you want to initialize your form in PHP before you start echoing anything to the page. So you don't want to start rendering while you're still doing calculations. So here, here, we want to display our form. And usually you do that by saying Moodle form equals new form. And this is like a, uh, you know, just like a class. But, so this is, this is one form that they've already made somewhere in core Moodle, which extends Moodle form. But we don't want to display this form. We want to display our form. So before we can do this, we have to create a form definition. So let's do that. What we need is another file in classes because our form definition is a class. It's going to extend the Moodle form. So we'll call it edit because, uh, we'll, oh no, we'll, we'll make a new folder maybe, form, and we'll put it in there. It just kind of makes more sense. So this is going to be our edit form. Okay, so if we want to make a form in Moodle, let's Google that. Moodle form API, something like that. And we click the dev form docs. This is what we want to do here. Extend Moodle form, make a new class, create a definition, create some validation if we want, and then instantiate that in a new variable. So let's do it like that. Here's our form and I don't like seeing that without the boilerplate there so let's put that in. And we obviously need the forms library so that's what that line is doing. And here let's say message edit. Oh let's just say edit. And yeah, so we can just call our form edit because this is going to be the editing a uh, message form. So in our form, we want to have some elements. And let's do this. Okay, we can leave all that. So we want to have different elements. Elements are different inputs in the form. So here we've got an element that is like a text where you can enter an email. That makes sense. And we can set what type it is and set a default value. So let's just kind of display this first before we actually start messing with it. Like, so we're obviously going to change this form to have a message text and a message type. But I just want to show it first. So if we want to display our form, well, we've made a new class over here. So all we need to do is go our middle form equals new edits. So this should be referring to our 
middle form over there. But I don't think this is going to work. However, if we refresh, this won't work just yet because the edit class is not found. So what we got to do first is require this particular file so that we can see this class. Require once. And what we can do is use our global config now that we, we've initialized the config.php so we can use the config dir root which is the root of the whole Moodle uh, file system and then we can navigate down through local message classes form uh, edit.php so now that Moodle knows about this file it should be able to find the class and initialize this and display the form. Okay, cool. So we can display our email. So now that we can display our form, that's cool. Let's build out this form a bit and we really only need two fields, at least to start with, a text and a type. So the text can be the message and we will call it message text this is the actual name of uh, of the element and we don't have to put that we can instead put um, message text so this is going to be like a label and so if we refresh now we see message text but we have an error um, did you call set type ah yeah so what we haven't done we've called set type on email but we've changed the name to message text so let's put that we have to these have to match basically this is set type for this particular element let's refresh again cool and param type, I mean, let's look at that. We can have different stuff here. All HTML tags are stripped. Okay, sure. I mean, we could make this a proper HTML editor, but maybe later. Let's just kind of get the basic functionality of our plugin done first. Default value, please enter a message, maybe. And yeah, let's just take a look at that. Cool, that's pretty good. Now we want to do a message type as well. So for message message type, let's look at our lib file again. So I commented this out before. And we have different types set here. And if I go there, we can see all the types here. So I think what would make sense in our form is a drop down menu showing all these different types that we can choose from. I mean, there's four of them here, right? So a select where we can choose one of the four types. Okay, cool. So it's, let's just comment this back out again and go back to our form. So we want to display a select with these four types. So we're going to add another element. And this one is going to be type select. And what else do we need? We need the title of what it's going to be called. We're going to call it message type. Yeah, type makes sense. Well, and we need to put that obviously in quotes. Then what we need to do is put in a parameter which is going to be our select options. So you know what we'll do is just look at an example somewhere else. So I'm just searching the whole code base and we can see just right here, I mean, this is a fine example. We set up choices, and then we do select with our choices in there. So, let's do something like that. I like that. I'm going to grab that, put that in here. 0, 1, 2, 3, say. And our... Uh, label is going to be message type and then we're going to put choices 
And that's what we're going to have like that, so we can get rid of this. And instead of this, obviously, I want to put our core notification types. Let's put those in there. Like that. Warning. And these are going to be the other types. So, success. Uh, what was the other one? Error. Info. Cool. So we've added the element. Let's just go back to that one because I kind of liked that thing. We set the default. We could add a help button and we want to, we don't need to set the type. I think we can set a default. That kind of makes sense. Um, set default for message type to say info, maybe that, like so number three. Yeah, let's see how that goes. Info, and there's the rest of our uh, types, so that's pretty cool. So we can show our types here, and the last thing obviously we'll need is the actual submit button. So we've got no way to actually submit this form right now. And all you have to do is come in here and go this, referring to the extended Moodle form, of course, the abstract class Moodle form. Look how huge this file is. It's got so many different methods that we can use. One of them is add action buttons. And do we want to cancel button? By default, that is true. So, sure. Let's just go with that and refresh. Save, cancel. That looks pretty good. So this is great. We've set up a form. Now, let's see how we can add uh, the data submitted by the form into our database.